You want to profit from nonprofits? Stay tuned to this morning's Carolina People, coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the South Carolina Employment Security Commission's Coastal Workforce Center at 200 Victory Lane in Conway, serving the entire Grand Strand. We're focused on the South Carolina Association of Nonprofit Organizations, and we're visiting with its executive director, Mason Hardy. Good That's morning, right. Mason. Good morning. Glad Thank to be here. Thank you so much for coming in early on a Wednesday morning. Certainly. Glad to be here. That's a pretty early trip down, coming in from Columbia. It is, but everything was fine. Thanks for doing that. I, I think I heard you say you were listening to the radio a little bit on the way in. That's, That's right. a good opportunity to, to, to get on down. We really appreciate you coming in. Of course, a lot going on this year. You all are celebrating a big anniversary. Our 10th anniversary as the Nonprofit Association of South Carolina. We're, it's a long name, the South Carolina Association of Nonprofit Organizations, but everybody calls us Scampo. 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 Yeah. I wonder if there's a Scampo with that M that anyone would get confused with. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> we always say the N P O. It's worth for nonprofits. So that's the key word. Right. Our name, right. of course. Scampo. Yeah. Exactly. And our website is scampo.org. Okay. For good. For being an organization, not a commercial. Not a commercial one. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. We uh, recently saw March of Dimes promoting all their events as a marchofdimes.org, and then saw they have one, one website to marchofdimes.com. And I guess because so many folks just type in dot coms mm -hmm. out of uh, out of uh, used to going on the web. Exactly. But, and that that's a good practice by any business to get both websites, the com and the dot org. Right. Somebody right. else already has scampo.com. Oh so no. We keep with the org, but that's also the spirit of the nonprofit. Of well. course, absolutely. How, so it's it's been ten years this it has year. Has been ten years, as a matter of fact. Scampo has been in existence, and it's been one. We just had our 10th anniversary conference in Columbia. We rotated around the state. We were in Myrtle Beach here last year, uh, right? and then we'll be in Charleston next year and back in the upstate, then back to Myrtle Beach. So every four years, we're back in the Myrtle Beach area. This is a growing area. Obviously, Gorey County is one of the fastest growing counties in the state, yes. but the nonprofits here are growing tremendously as well. Have there been some new nonprofits that have formed in the last uh, handful of years? Absolutely. Here in Gorey County, literally is growing. Uh, I like to say like mushrooms, but the nonprofits are pop popping up. But it's natural because of the growth in population. There's a growth in the need for services. The government can't do everything, and oftentimes nonprofits are called on to fill the role of government. Yes, are you seeing that in other counties throughout the state? Some of the other counties. I guess you serve all. 40, we do. Six we have 830 right? members of Scamp oh, right on. now. It's a record for us, and uh, we re represent every single county, all 46 counties. Myrtle Beach or the Horry County area, I think, is our fifth or fourth largest county in the state uh -huh. and growing. Myrtle, uh, Greenville, of course, Richland, Lexington County, and Charleston are other big counties mm -hmm. in South mm -hmm. Carolina. Just where the population base is, that's where the needs are. Sure, yeah. sure. How exciting! And of course, what does it take for an organization to uh, to to join Scampo is that uh, I mean what would prompt them to get involved well anybody who's concerned about nonprofits both in their management and the organizational structure how to set up a nonprofit Scampo can help them do that Great. Uh, all this information of course is on our website at scampo.org but even non 501c3s we're the trade association for 501c3s we are a 501c3 right. we're not set up as a c6 or a c4 or anything like that we are a 501c3 but anybody can join, and we have Wachovia as a member of Scampo, Good. but they are a friend member. They can't vote on our board of trustees mm -hmm. to put people there. Only 501c3 members of Scampo can actually vote to establish our board of trustees mm -hmm. um, throughout the state. So they have no voting privileges, but they can take advantage of member benefits that we offer both for 501c3s and non-501c3s. That's so, fascinating. Well, that's is. a good opportunity. As you said, you said 800, how many? 830 members throughout the state. That is fantastic. So, uh, we're growing here in the Horry County area in the PD, that's for sure. That's wonderful. Yeah. Real quick about yourself, Mason. Are you originally from this area? I was born and raised in Columbia, South okay. Carolina. Okay, sure. And uh, I enjoyed that, but I often visited the beach here, and I'll be here this summer, as a matter of fact. Oh, our, good. Our family has planned a week at Pauley's Island. So Fantastic. We'll in July. Well, that has deep roots up. Up and down the strand and of course when we think of the strand you know that little river to Pauley's Island essentially Certainly. that connection so uh, it does go deep 
but I, I actually grew up going to the Myrtle Beach State Park. My father was in PRT for a long time, and this is in the 70s, so I actually have camped right in Myrtle Beach State Park back I'm in the that, day. Right across <laughs> from the uh, former Air, or the uh, former Myrtle Beach Air Force That's Base. exactly right. I used to love watching those A-10s flying in as a child. So. I bet. Listen to you. That's <laughs> great. Well, the Fox 43 here, the station we're broadcasting from, was housed in the former Air Flight Simulator, okay. where all the uh, warthogs and otherwise all those pilots were trained. Uh, right. Magnificent facility on the former Air Force Base. Certainly. That's very exciting. Yeah. What prompted your interest in uh, nonprofit organizations, Mason? Is that something from childhood? I guess your dad working at work, working for the state. He he did, and he sells playground equipment. My mother's a child psychologist, so uh, there's a little bit of overlap there. <laughs> um, but I've always been involved in nonprofits. I guess it was the upbringing, but even when but prior to working for nonprofits, prior to Scampo, I actually raised money for hospitals. Uh -huh. So I got paid to, to help people. But even when I worked for a law firm and for the South Carolina Hospital Association. Um, I actually volunteered for my church, for the Museum of Art in Columbia, the United Way in Columbia, mm -hmm. raising money for my schools. So I've always had fun with it. And when I got the opportunity to go work for a hospital and raise money, I was actually going to get paid to help people. What a wonderful oh, yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So now I run the nonprofit association that helps everybody help everybody. So. Uh, it's tremendous. I feel like I'm making a big impact on the state of South Carolina. You've got brother and sister organizations in the other 49 states, or is this uh, one of a kind? It's not one of a kind. There are 38. We have some that are in emerging states. North Carolina has a North Carolina Center for Nonprofits located in Raleigh. Uh -huh. They are tremendous. They've been, they're a lot older than Scampo is. We have about six staffers. They have about 17. Uh -huh. So uh, we, I've actually been up there to the North Carolina Center for Nonprofits to visit them and get some mentoring from them, being Good. a newbie in the job. Sure. But we actually have a, a national National group called the NCNA, the National Council on Nonprofit Associations. Of course, Scampo is a member. The Nonprofit Center in North Carolina is a member. So we go to national shows and national meetings to talk about the issues that are happening with nonprofit trade associations throughout the state. Great, throughout the United States. So. So you said again, if someone was interested in helping to launch a nonprofit or get one uh, up and running, they would uh, even visit y'all's uh, SCANPO dot org website. That's exactly the right. Scampo. They can visit the Scampo website. We have lots of links there specifically over to the IRS website and they're going to mm -hmm. fill out a 1023. That's the form to officially start a nonprofit. Uh, and that form is changing as the scrutiny and accountability measures of the nonprofits are becoming more and more so. Mm -hmm. um, that document is changing so they're asking for a lot more information. Mm -hmm. But Scampo can walk you through that and of course we have a 1-800 line too where folks can give us a call and that, all that information is located on our website so we can help answer the questions and even point folks in the right directions on how to get there. Now, would, would, would someone need to be a member first to be able to take advantage of those services? No, they don't have to. Right. I guess as a nonprofit, you really you we, know, the goal is to help. Our mission is to serve, support, and strengthen nonprofits for a better South Carolina. We want all nonprofits to join Scampo, of course, mm -hmm. but we will answer the phone. If somebody sends us a question with, to our info at scampo.org email address, we'll answer the question for them, too. So we're here to serve all nonprofits. Right. We can't serve them unless we have members, so we do, of right. course, want them to join. Our membership dues range from $50 to 475 and the 475 top level or for those groups that have a budget of over $5 million. So oh, we're come pretty on. inexpensive. How is it that cheap? How can you all operate? Well, <laughs> How did you pay to get down here early it, this it's morning? It's tough sometimes. Well, yeah. we get lots of grants from foundations. We have Good. wonderful relationships with the foundation community here in South Carolina. But we also do trainings throughout the state and throughout the year that train nonprofits on how to do it. And, of course, they, they pay to come to the trainings. Sure. The members pay less. The non-members pay more. So uh -huh, we're we want to encourage non folks to, right. to join Scampo just so they can take advantage of the membership benefits. We have publications that we sell that are less expensive for members and more expensive Good. for non-members. Sure, so there's always sure. a little stick, a little carrot in front of the horse to get Absolutely. To and you've got information at scampo.org about some of those publications. Uh, Absolutely. That's all open to the public for them to order online our, our publications. And they can be the compensation and benefits report. Lots okay. of folks call us saying, what should we be paying our executive director right. or our fundraisers? Well, we have a South Carolina-based statistics on that. That's tremendous. A lot that are relatively up to date. Well, this, this is actually 2004, and okay. we're planning to update it this year. But sure. if you just put in the inflations or CPI index for right. South Carolina, you can simply get those numbers up to that the 2007 is, numbers. That is exciting, Mason. Right. Very yes. exciting. If a viewer didn't spend much time on the Internet or hadn't visited the uh, scampo.org website, how about if they wanted to call if uh, someone was interested, actually if someone needs to get off to work now or get family off to school, is there a good phone number? 
to call? It's a Columbia number, 803-929-0399. Okay. And they can call that, and uh, uh, usually during the regular office hours, somebody's there. Sure, of course. 803-929-0399. 0399. That's great. A lot of folks who may not have access to the Internet or not visit the library, but if they do, you've got some, I, I assume you'd have that phone number on the website as well. Absolutely. Good, good. Yeah. You know, it's so exciting when you see websites and the opportunities they provide, particularly, as you say, to links back to other folks. So it's not just Scampo providing, it's the IRS providing, it's national nonprofit associations, so you're seeking lots of information from others. It's a wonderful resource, and we have all the links there, including the Secretary of State's office. If you're going to raise money in South Carolina, you must be... Uh, register with the Secretary of State's office, so we have a link there. In fact, there's a link from the Secretary of State's office to the Scampo website. Is that right? Yes. They, wow, they that's are, probably they, rare. Well, we have a great relationship, and as I go around the country and I, I go to these national meetings, they're jealous of our relationship with our state regulators. The Secretary huh. of State's office is the state body that regulates nonprofits here in the state, and they don't enjoy that type of friendly relationship and an open relationship that we have right. in the other states, and they're, they're quite jealous. We actually, the Secretary of State's office has an advisory council for nonprofits. I serve on that council. Good. And we meet Mason. twice a year. So we sit down with the Secretary and we talk about issues that, that he's concerned about currently, Mark Hammond, right. and that the issues that are going on with uh, nonprofits. And he's talking about the legislative issues that he may be pushing. We're talking about the ones that we're pushing, how we feel about those, both of us. Mm -hmm. Great interaction between the two, and a lot of states don't enjoy that type I of I bet life. they don't. You had mentioned early in the interviews, uh, oftentimes uh, even the IRS and otherwise making some of the changes because of extra scrutiny That's exactly on nonprofits. What has prompted that extra scrutiny? Maybe? Well, it all started with Enron and the WorldCom, those right. type of things in the for-profit world. And and then, of course, Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. For those folks in the corporate world, they all know that dirty word or that dirty phrase of Sarbanes-Oxley. Basically, that was putting much more accountability into the for-profit world. Some of those measures that were passed in 2002 in Sarbanes-Oxley actually roll over into the nonprofit world as well, mm -hmm. notably the Whistleblower Protection Act mm -hmm. and also document retention. Nonprofits can't have shredding parties either, you know, as they passed <laughs> sure. in Sarbanes-Oxley. Mm -hmm. So those types of things have, have rolled down to the nonprofit world, but the expectations are such that we need to be adhering to more of the Sarbanes-Oxley type regulations on the for-profit world into the nonprofit mm -hmm. world. So Senator Grassley, when he was the head of the Senate Finance Committee in Washington, now of course it's Senator Baucus, who's a Democrat, right. he wanted to make sure that this type of Enron or WorldCom scandals weren't going to take place in the nonprofit world. Good. So we called on a panel of from uh, the nonprofits called the Independent Sector. There's a big national group that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations and the big mega large nonprofits of the world are members of the independent sector. Senator Grassley called on the independent sector to put together a panel to come up with recommendations to the nonprofits on how to make us more accountable, more transparent. Good. And they did. So there's actually a website called nonprofitpanel.org that has their recommendations. And the recommendations are threefold some to Congress, some to the IRS, and some to the nonprofit sector, to our community as a whole on how to be more accountable ourselves without being regulated or enforced by the IRS. Some of those laws were passed in the Pension and Protection Act of 2006. Mm -hmm. So some of those regulations we seek. You know, there are two ways that nonprofits can, can mess up or be taken advantage of. One of them is to be taken advantage of. Somebody can actually shelter some type of uh, self annulment mechanism by starting a 501c3 or mm -hmm. a 501c3 unknowingly can be taken advantage of. So we want some type of regulation to make sure those types of things don't happen in our, yes. our community, in our sector. So uh, Senator Grassley is on top of that. He works with the independent sector in this nonprofit panel. And now Senator Bacchus is involved as well. So Got there's support more... from the majority as well. Yes, good, yes. Good. And so those national organizations keep on track of the federal regulation and the laws that are being passed to regulate the nonprofit sector. So that's that's tremendous, Mason. Well, you have ramped up fast in 14 yeah. months with the organization. You must, I, I'm sure while you were at Toomey and other places, you were probably picking up much of this as well for that, that same goal of being as transparent as possible. And I'm sure all nonprofits either have that goal or are working towards that to make sure they're as open book as, uh, as they can be. That's exactly right. And as transparent and accountable as they can be, the more trust there is. We, we have an initiative called Preserving the Public Trust. Without the public's trust, without these grants coming in, without private donors, corporate donors coming in, a nonprofit is going to fail. So they yes. want to really be as open and transparent as possible. 